So we're going to apologize in advance because mm-hmm. we are both sucking <laughs> on cough drops. Mm-hmm. Paul's not sponsored, sponsored. Uh-huh. What, you've got a honey lemon. Mm-hmm. I have honey lemon. I, I want traditional cherry. Nice. Very nice. Uh, mainly because Brittany said she didn't like cherry, and I was like, I don't like cherry. Or at least I think I don't like cherry, but now I'm, I felt like I should try it. Yeah. Do you, how do you feel about it now? It's okay. It's okay? Uh, now I'm like, maybe I should have gotten it. Honey lemon. <laughs> We're both sick. We are both sick. I know last episode I was sick. And then I got it a day later. A Literally day after. A day later. For some reason, we were sitting next to each other, mm-hmm. just talking next to each other for an hour yeah and somehow i'm sick the next somehow day somehow you're sick the next day it was honestly uh and that's the only that's the only way i can think about it because you were gone for like a whole week so either it was the world's longest incubation period for us to both get sick or, or... i randomly got sick on the plane and just so happened to get sick at the exact same time you got sick i don't know what it is but literally everyone that we have been speaking to is like you both got sick and we both the had the time. same thing yeah the same type of sickness it wasn't even like two oh different God. types sinus infection yeah. cold no, it we was... both have covid <laughs> and we're here we're giving here. it to our producer <laughs> zach we didn't tell you but hold on hold your horses get get ready get ready for it it's a wild ride <laughs> giddy up uh well so that's been fun so yeah, yeah. so uh what did you do on your sick days did you do anything fun did you consume any media i well i always consume media well what did you consume anything good um no i mean like it, it, it i feel like we're in just such a dead space like waiting for movies to come out i know waiting for shows because a lot of shows are on uh, break right or now just wrapped up like x-men you know just wrapped up and yeah then, yeah we're waiting for stuff waiting for stuff to happen um so I, did you watch any reruns or something like well comfort shows i started reading one of the bridgerton books oh the penelope one the penelope one well yes. that's just, so when i flew home the girl next to me mm-hmm. on the flight was reading that oh it's uh, i mean it's really good i was surprised i was like you know i'm just <laughs> Of course, I'm going to buy this for the smut, the the love story. Um, but no, it's actually really good. I was surprised at um, how much more in-depth you get to see like each character's feeling. So that's been my sort of sick time spent. What the viewers don't know is that we're actually just researching for that Marvel Bridgerton mm-hmm. idea we came up with on a previous podcast. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so for <clears throat> me... Um, I, um, at one point last week, I came home from work and then took, uh, like a six hour nap and then Mm -hmm. woke up, watched two episodes, random, actually my favorite episodes of Arrested Development. Uh, uh, it's when, uh, the girl from, uh, Seinfeld is Uh. the blind lawyer, (laughs) the the lawyer who's pretending to be blind and has the, but has a blind guide dog. I remember It's so incredible. I remember that And then I passed out again. (laughs) Just immediately. I watched those two and then I just passed back out. Well, see, and that's the secret to sick. And that's what I tell people all the time when I'm sick. Just pump me full of medicine. I'm going to sleep the Odin sleep like the whole time. Yep, yep, yep. I, I slept. I watched Captain America 2. Oh, okay. And Legally Blonde as well. This is a real... (sighs) so amazing and super bad it was a strange wow i really was it was like a, a smorgasbord of strange yeah. things that i was trying to get healthy with it's so funny because that collection of movies sounds like you were just like flipping through channels on a tv but uh, we're in a day I and age that. i missed that yeah really like honestly i know there used to be this thing on netflix where like you could just like randomize and it would just play yeah. something like yeah. that's that's honestly what you need when you're sick it, it really and is let's just reinvent cable <laughs> I think everybody wants to Let's go back. Bring it back. I mean, we all want the commercials. I mean, but they have to be as good as they were. Yeah. Well, w- w- listen, we can we can make some good commercials. Yeah. Just bring it back to like the retro style of commercials. But obviously, we also read comic books <laughs> yeah, more importantly right, let's, i mean let's get dive into super bad and bridgerton that's oh, yeah. what this episode yeah, is that's what this honestly episode is. i almost suggested we do that where it's like this is just an off week because it's a small week anyway it's a yeah. fifth week uh which means that not a lot out mm-hmm. you know it's kind of like a light week i was like we should just we should just do something just like no next you know next time it's like a fifth week maybe we just there's not a lot we'll just talk about whatever we watched and read and these guys yeah. have to deal with it yeah, Are we yeah, th- yeah we're not big enough 
We're not yet, are we? Maybe we can start coming up with, like, when it's off weeks and there's not a lot to talk about, a game that we can mm. do. Because that's always entertaining. Yes. Okay. So, you know, if we can think of Twister. some sort of... Maybe not Twister. <laughs> that would be um, weird. Yeah. That wouldn't that wouldn't translate so well on the podcast. Comic book think. Twister. It could be... <laughs> I don't know. Where are you going with this? <laughs> I don't know. I just said the first game that came to mind. The cherry is Monopoly. going to your head. <laughs> Um, well, I would say trivia, but you would beat me. Like, it would just be a, a sweep of the... You would sweep me. You know what we should do, me. though? D- okay, then, then we're talking about comics. Mm-hmm. Us three. I don't know. I think we could... We should We should all take the... There's... I keep getting targeted ads. Because mm-hmm. I'm a nerd. For there's a new... There's a Jeopardy. I've My dream has been to be on Jeopardy. Mm-hmm. And it would be such a fitting, like, crushing not realization of my dream to be on real jeopardy Mm -hmm. they're doing a pop culture jeopardy oh okay teams of three teams of three pop culture i would wreck on that show yeah i have lots of specific maybe maybe we do an ultimate comics live show team we 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 fill we take the test because there's a test that we got to fill out oh okay you know to to try and get on the show yeah 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 i'd wreck on that show you probably would i mean i i might be the weak link but i know rand i know random i feel like no i feel like you have a really good i feel like zach what about what talk i'm better than talk (laughs) all right zach (laughs) Zach's the face. <laughs> Zach, <laughs> you are the face. <laughs> Zach, <laughs> we're the brains. We're the brains. You're the face. Um, okay. Well, anyway. Anyway. Well, so me, you know, maybe we'll do that. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so comics. This. Oh wait. So wait. So our question of the week. Yes. So, so you can tell we kind of found this one <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> this one's a question that we've thought about talking about for a while. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's time. Mm-hmm. What what do you think makes or breaks a good versus bad comic book store? Pretend that question made sense. Like, yes. What makes a good comic shop? What is like, what are the, the tangible and maybe intangible qualities that separate the ultimate comics right. from everyone else? Right. Uh, well, as a person who is addicted to consumerism, like everybody else in 2024, um, I would say you have quite a few, like, boxes to check off when you're going through, like, what makes a good store. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, your content. Do you have enough of a selection? Mm-hmm. Do you have, uh, things that both new people like myself mm-hmm. or someone who's, like, really seasoned? Mm-hmm can come in and ask for and like you you would say yeah we absolutely have that um but also stores that are like aesthetically pleasing are always good because when you walk into a hole in the wall or just like every inch is covered which i totally understand i i would i've operated stores like that too where it's just like when you have a small space and you're just like in order to make the numbers work everything needs to be right but but that can be make things hard to find yes and overwhelming yeah yeah. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Most of the time people will always like say, oh, that hole in the wall place has the best whatever food selection, whatever. But when you're in there, mm-hmm. you're probably fearing for your life or mm-hmm. health. Collapse of like a comics avalanche. Kind yes. Of yes. Like a hoarder's closet, mm-hmm. you know, of just like stacked comics. You're like, I don't know where to start. I've definitely been in stores like that. Just like stacked comics just out mm-hmm. or like no aisles and just feeling kind of claustrophobic yeah just, and you know sometimes it's just like you have to like i said you have to make do with what you have right so i totally understand but it can it can yeah as someone who definitely can get like anxious in those kinds of spaces yes. like i just feel like oh i can't find anything i just want like i automatically my brain's like i give up yeah Yeah, yeah, whatever i was trying to find it's like it's over yeah you don't want to sit there and have to sift i mean that's how i always feel walking into like forever 21 that yes you're like i'm gonna have to search for stuff i can't do it yeah i can't do it i that yeah i'm too old i'm 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 not no longer (laughs) first off i've aged out we're not 21 not forever (laughs) not forever um i forget what i went in there for the other day it's just like wander in there because the mall store yeah yeah. and i'm just like oh god yeah you you walk in oh i was looking at their sorry their diet they have a they had diet coke 
paraphernalia. Oh. So I was looking at the Diet Coke baseball hats. See, they weren't and cute. They have, sometimes they'll do like these really cool little like collabs, but, and you walk in for the collab. That's what they, they got me. They I get like, you. I love Diet Coke. And then you walk in and you're just immediately hit with like piles and piles of just all kinds of crazy clothes collections. And also everyone's mean to you there. <laughs> or maybe it's just me. Maybe no, it's just me. No, 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 no. I think it's because all of the employees that work there, which is another check on the box of what makes a good comic Very, shop. That is the number one for me. <clears throat> that is the like helpful employees that are happy to help and knowledgeable to yeah. help you. Those yeah. are so important. They are like the key because like I said, if you have someone new who walks in like me and I don't know what I'm looking for, you should have someone with the knowledge that can be like, oh, these are the things that are coming out recently. You might want to jump onto it, you know, or someone knowledgeable mm -hmm. who walks in and wants something specific. Uh, you wouldn't be like me being like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have gone into a store recently where like no one greeted you or anything. Mm -hmm. And I was just it was like I couldn't not help. I was like it was a different state. And I heard someone be like, they were talk like, oh, yeah, I know they're doing Secret Wars or something. Secret Wars is going to be like the next big thing that that that's what I heard because they're bringing in Dr. Doom and they're going to do Secret Wars. Wonder if I wonder if they have the original Secret Wars here story. Mm -hmm. And there's just two employees just talking. And I'm just like, and I'm with my family. <laughs> And they're like, just go. <laughs> and I just, I like bring them. I like figure out the layout of the store. I'm like, yeah. hey, let me help you find that. I like sell, I sell him the Secret oh, no. Wars graphic oh, novel. No. And then I I left. Uh, it's like, okay, we can leave now. I made a sale. And then the guy started laughing once he realized I didn't work there. Oh, no. But I couldn't, I couldn't not. I was like, yeah. man, how do you hear that? Like, it's like a desperate cry for help. Like, I wish somebody could help right. me find Secret Wars, this specific product you have uh -huh. multiple copies of on your shelf. Right. And then, be, and then ignore them? Just completely just ignore like, them. Completely. I was like, I'll do it. Yeah, I yeah. should have gotten commission. You should have. You should have gotten commission. I mean, that's to, as an introverted person. When I go into stores, I don't want someone to hunt me down like I'm in buckle, and they're like clearly making commission, and they're like, "Can I please?" But but for the love or of Vans. God, just buy something. And they're following you around the store. Like, like I bought you four pairs of shoes. I guessed your size. Don't <laughs> try them on. Don't do that to me. But to have someone who will at least greet you, say, "Hey, Happy. welcome in." If you have anything you need, let me know. Are you mm -hmm. looking for anything in particular? Right. Give me the chance to Retail be like, 101. yeah, just g give me the chance to say no thanks mm -hmm. or yes, please help me. But yeah, saying like like that, <laughs> like I wish someone could oh, point me in the boy. direction. I was and like a secret <laughs> shopper. I was like, what is he guys <laughs> death? <laughs> but so yeah good employees um because obviously you don't want to be forever 21 because you're not alone i've been in there multiple times uh if i ever wanted to try something on mm -mm. you can't you mm -mm. just can't you you need to just like hold it up to yourself and oh, be like yeah. this looks like it fits um so yeah good employees yep good selection uh pleasing to the eye those are like the three like that's like i feel like there's like you know it's like college like there's 101 mm -hmm. and then there's like 201 yeah and then there's master you know you keep leveling up yeah because i was gonna say that's just surface level i feel like but those are like the three like almost important like i mean stock being having the stock being able to find the stock mm -hmm. and someone being able to someone who can sell you the stock like those are the three most important things yeah. i feel like uh, i mean you can get into lo location and things like that but i think those like you hit it on the head those are the three things that like you just immediately when you get into a store those are the, th the things you notice do they have what i want mm -hmm. if not do they have something else cool yep and you know is someone do i feel like someone's being mean to me right you know <laughs> do i feel like i can ask for help or are they going to ch throw things at me until right. i run out of the right. store yeah and then you know after that you move into like 102 or 201 you know whatever like next level is like do they do cool things with the community? Yes. You know, that's important for yes, me. Like for sure. Seeing I feel like a good comic shop has to definitely be a community space where, you know, they're partnering with maybe other businesses or mm -hmm. other like local you know, we partner with nonprofits, charities in the area, schools in the area, local creators. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, being a kind of community hub I feel like is important because 
you got to give people a reason. Like, I mean, people can buy comics online. You know? Yes. We, we sell them online. People can just, they don't need to go into a comic book store. It's, we're in whatever year we're in, 2024. Mm-hmm. You know? So my thing is, like, you have to give people a real reason. You have to give people a real reason to want to come to your store. Absolutely. Because there's just, one, there's so little time anymore. Everyone works all the time. Yep. So it's like we only have so many hours in the day. So you are fighting for that one hour they have where they need to drive. they are got to drive to your store and come in. So that you better be motivating them to get there. Yes. So, like, if you don't have the basics, why would they drive? Why would they not just buy it online, you know, right. maybe get it cheaper, you know, or whatever? Um, and also, you know, they only, like, yeah, why are they giving you that hour? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we only have so many. That's true. That's, <laughs> just, like, that is so true. And I, I think that also just goes hand in hand with, uh, particularly for comic shops like Ultimate, where you guys have subscription boxes, what's going to keep people coming back mm-hmm. uh, for the the books that they want to, you know, hold in a box on the side. And I do, I do think that the community aspect that you're talking about will keep them coming back. They're like, oh, this is my comic shop these are Mm -hmm. the employees that i have gotten to know and i talk about comics with you build a relationship with the uh, customer you know it's like it's like how i have like my coffee shop where i know my baristas and like they know me and they know my order and i like going in there and i can shoot the shit and i can say did you see furiosa yeah 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 and i can say i didn't because i've been sick you know (laughs) right uh but yeah yeah for sure that and you know as you move up like you know we just had sanford green out at the Mm -hmm. store what an incredible human being he was um if you miss it, you missed out. Yeah. That's why you have to pay attention to what goes on in your local comic shop because he was super cool dude. Um, but, yeah, those kinds of things, having having creators out for signings, I mean, they can be expensive for shops, but I feel like they're super important to just, you know, I don't know, reward customers. Reward yeah. customers for being into comics. And I, I still think, I always think of, like, you know, I have memories of me getting stuff signed. And I wasn't super little. Like, even in high school, when I met Jim Chung, and he signed my Young Avengers, I was it was, like, so cool. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, such a huge moment for me and definitely, like, important to keep me re- on my comic book journey. Yeah. I feel like those moments are really important, making those moments at the comic shop. Here. For sure. For sure. Having that, making that connection and I I definitely think that community outreach is the best way to not only like you said reward customers you already have but also bring in new ones you know and it's always there's always room for improvement and that's that's the cool thing about like there's always different things you can do to make your shop better I mean I was just when I went home last week for my my siblings graduations there was this shop that was really you know, and it was just, again, by nature, it was a mm-hmm. small shop, kind of like you described, hole in the wall, like, they only had so much room, so everything was packed in tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if, it, I think it was a new owner, but they they bought, uh, I think they bought the building, either way, they rented out the spot next to it, next to them and combined into this mega spot, and they okay. redid the whole thing, like, it was all carpeted, old carpet, now it's all, like, nice hardwood mm-hmm. floors, mm-hmm. like, all out completely organized yeah. all the signage so you can know where everything was i thought i was in a different store it was incredible yeah uh the guy was like like laughing because i took like 50 photos because i was like <laughs> trying to st- i steal ideas all yeah. the time yeah, I'm yeah. Like, oh man that sign's That's so good. cool i'm sending them to alan on my vacation i'm like we gotta do the windows like this <laughs> he's like yes yes we do yeah. um so yeah you know there's always room for improvement and i mean yeah yeah, yeah. So, and I mean that goes along with aesthetically pleasing. When they changed things up, they made everything more accessible more to findable, the eye, you know, and had more stuff. Yeah, had a kids section that they, you know, they just never really had room for a big kids section. They had a kids section now, yeah. which was really cool. Completely changes the experience. Yeah. So, let us know in the comments what you know if you have a local comic shop that's not us. Maybe you live somewhere. We're not there yet. Yeah. I mean, we do have that uh, one international fan. We do. Right, right, right. Aussies. Your local comic shop. What is your local comic shop? How many kangaroos are there? Are there any spiders the size of birds hanging out in, like, the corners of the store? Do you have to, like, always watch your back? Are koalas mean? They look so cute. They look so nice. How could they be mean? (sighs) 
Anyway, I'll keep going. <laughs> I, start, keep naming marsupials. Keep going, and I'm sure that fan is like, I hate you both now because you're just stereotyping. stereotyping <laughs> Do you know any that like the lower tier Hemsworth brother, the one whose name I don't know, who was on like the just the soap opera? The oldest. Oh, is it Brian? Yeah, I do. Mm, Brian I'm, Hemsworth, is that right? I'm just let us as know. Bad. Yeah, in let the us comments. Let us know <laughs> who is the original Hemsworth. <laughs> not Chris. Not Liam. Not Liam. The other the one. The other one. The other one. Not famous as much. <laughs> Shorter, a little. Obviously, the face of the family. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, so it was a small week, but there were some books that came out this week. Yes. Uh, one that we talked about. On FOC, a few weeks earlier, Mm -hmm. Grommets, number one, by Rick Remender and Brian Posehn, with art by Moreno Denicio. Brian Posehn, professional comedian. Uh, He works with Rick. uh, He's worked with Rick before. Rick Remender, creator of things like Low, Deadly Class, others, sorry, I'm... Et cetera. Seven to Eternity. (laughs) Uh... Yeah, and this is di- very different from a lot of those books because this is very slice of life. Uh, did you? Re- I read the letters page in the back, which was kind of cool. Uh, it was, a you know, Rick and Brian both wrote a letter in the back kind of explaining the origin of this book. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they were both just 1980s kind of skate punks. And this is imagining if they had... If they had known each other and been friends in junior high, like what oh. kind of shenanigans? So this is like Love loosely that. based off of like their like skating days in junior high and high school and like who they were as kids, but like imagining if they had been been friends back then yeah 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 i love that i love that concept that's really neat yeah. and it's a really fun book i had a lot of fun reading it um obviously lots of quips it brings you right back to the 1980s where everyone was a little more harsh lots of queef jokes <laughs> queefing unapologetic I, I, but like mo- it was so many times i was like did you guys really joke about that that much uh bringing like, bringing back the term butt buddies was butt buddies. really fun see uh, that that tracked for me i queef i guess was just out of left field for me i was like i've seen a lot of 80s movies and i've just never heard that so let us know in the comments please you might get your YouTube. You might get a strike on your YouTube account. Maybe use a different word, but let us know. Did you and your friends, if you were junior high in the eighties, did you use that word as more than once in this was in that the your, conversation? Was that your comeback, like yo mama jokes in the nineties, but in the eighties it was just queef queefing all the time? Look that up if you don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Look up what that means. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was fun. Did you know I? I used to skate as a kid. I was a skate punk in the nice. 80s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Skater Sienna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I can no longer move my arm all the way. That's oh, from skateboarding. That's from skateboarding? Yeah, I broke my elbow in three places skateboarding when I was 11 or 12. Wow. I had four surgeries because I used to not move. It just healed so I couldn't move it at all. Oh, my gosh. Now I got a couple screws in there. And badass scars that the ladies love. And I'm like, yeah, I got that when I was skating. And they're like, wow. Wow. I was 11. <laughs> Clutching their pearls. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I don't skateboard anymore. <laughs> well, uh, you know. Being in a cast for three years really took the shine off of skateboarding. You win some, me. you lose some. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I had a lot of memories for like two years of my life where I went to the skate park a lot. And, nice. And it was a big part of my life. I was never good. Right. Well. Clearly. It, it was a culture. You yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was going to say, like, you experienced the culture then since you hung out at the skate park. Yes. And... Yeah. There was definitely, I got, I got, you know, obviously this was in the 2000s yeah so not the 80s but not, not the heyday but i definitely got had some like kind of fun memories of like when i would go to the skate park and you know screw around with kids i would you know just my skate park friends that i would never see aside from when i went to the skate park yeah. you know, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. it was it was fun so this is definitely very much like a slice of life mm-hmm. slice of life book especially you know they're trying to hit the people who are their age right if you mm-hmm. were mm-hmm 
a young boy growing up in the 80s and growing up in the 80s and you liked judas priest rush uh rush that was odd for me <laughs> they were like with the they judas priest mention- shirt he's like yeah. let me put on this rush Let's tape this rush i was like that doesn't make any sense i noticed that too and laughed but he did say that it was pre keyboarding mm-hmm. rush so i, I like that the grandpa's like too much drumming. <laughs> Grandpa didn't like Neil Peart's drums on on the Rush album, um, but yeah, yeah, it's very it's very nostalgic. Uh, the art is gorgeous. Oh yeah, I, I beautiful. Don't, like very kind of like just super bright colors, mm-hmm. almost like Pixar-y in a way. Yes, a little bit, especially the Judas Priest. You know, the more like metalhead type. Yeah, kid. yeah, he's kind of goofy and like derpy, and you know. Um, they look like they're going to schools at Ridgemont High, mm-hmm. like, uh, but it is super fun. Uh, but yeah, just a little nostalgic slice of life book. If, if you have nostalgia for that, maybe you were a skater like me. Yeah. Maybe you love Rush. If you yeah. were a skater boy. I mean. And she said, see you later, boy. This is, this the, is it. This is the book. And for Avril, you. I read in the New York Times, Avril Levine is one. She says she's not, she is the real her and she has not been cloned or body swapped <laughs> has that she was... has she made an official statement on this yes wow and also she's making a comeback so it is maybe perfect timing to pick this up put on some avril yeah put on some skater boy put yeah. your put your wife beater and your necktie on mm-hmm. with your mm-hmm. baggy cargo pants mm-hmm. and, and um skate it out skate it out and, <laughs> and, and you know not be a clone or whatever and it is. not be a clone don't fall into conspiracies <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's grommets that's from image uh and then you know keeping up the the metal feeling and the yes wheels uh them, theme here helverine number mm-hmm. one have you ever heard a word more badass than that <sighs> seriously especially when you like mix in the the cover and the Look at that, the and flame. the concept and and the M and M's on the back and the <laughs> love that uh, super metal. I mean, as as I'm like just hearing the title and looking at the cover and started to read through, I just started hearing bodies by drowning pool, just as metal as you can possibly get. I was listening. I was hearing it's the Ace of Spades. <laughs> you know, a lot of Motorhead, very Lemmy. Yeah, um, I can see that too. <laughs> so this is by Ben Percy. With art uh, by Julius Ota. And, you know, it is clearly, you know, how many great ideas in comic books are born. You know, what if we mash two things together? Mix them up. What if we mixed Ghost Rider, but it's Wolverine? Mix it all up together, you get Helverine. That's what this is. That's what this is. Uh, I mean, like, <laughs> and that's it. And that's, that's all it. we got on it. That's what we got. <laughs> Parental advisory. Straightforward. Uh, there's a lot of um, hell. Hell. There's a lot Flames. of fire. Flames. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of wheels. A um, lot of wheels. A lot of hot wheels, if you will. A lot of leather hot. and buckles. A lot of BDSM type imagery. Mm-hmm. Not, mm-hmm. but not enough. Not enough. Not enough. And also, nobody at any point gives us the uh, devil horns, the rock on. Mm-hmm. Like, But mm-hmm. I feel like it's appropriate for this. So, yeah, I mean, so originally, Helverine was what, like, this is, you know, this is not the first time. This is not the first appearance or anything. This, yeah. This concept. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. A, a new little series. But originally, Logan Wolverine was helverine mm-hmm. but ghost rider cured him yes he is not the helverine anymore right uh but someone sure looks like him someone sure looks like him someone has the the, the claws the claws uh they are on fire and they are exacting vengeance they are they are killing people to uh make the the evil spirit that's inside of them happy but they are making sure that they are evil people which yes. i can respect yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely you know, um so obviously wealthy logan is being blamed and he's like that's not that ain't me anymore i i didn't do that but, but who could it be but who could it be it's a reveal we can't we can't say who it is right so read it find out you find out at the end of the very first issue who it is uh yeah. so it's worth a read and of course all that the government is also trying to create their own little Yes. Hell. hell. Uh, it's classic, like, oh, I'm the Pentagon. Mm-hmm. And these soldiers, 
I'm going to put an ancient curse on them. Yep. And they're going to be my hell soldiers. Uh, dressed like BDSM, BDSM. goth it's important. metalheads. I yeah. think the powers don't work unless you're in like buckles and leather. assless chaps. Right. All black. All black. So that is Helverine. <laughs> <laughs> um, assless chaps not included, unfortunately. Oh my gosh. We, we I are, to we're, buy my own. We're poking fun, but it, this was actually a really fun read. It was fun. It was um, fun. You know, as as a person who loves goth and, and horror stuff, I, I, th- I thought it was fun. I thought it was yeah. cool. And then <clears throat> early... It's May. It's May. It's May. It's not June yet, guys. It's not June yet. DC's a little early. Blowing their... <laughs> what? Bl- wait, wait. Blowing what their what? What are they going to blow? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> DC Pride 2024. The Pride Anthology came early this year. It's not a problem I have. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, so this is the big oversized <clears throat> anthology, which if you don't know what that is, it's a collection of short stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is written and drawn by queer creators yes. that work for DC, which is cool. Very cool. And it is highlighting queer characters in the DC pantheon. Uh, a nice overall collection of representation for the very important Pride Month coming up next month. But we w- we were a little so I will say mm-hmm. we both we both kind of said the same thing after we read this. Yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna admit something to you guys. I don't read every comic that comes out. <sighs> no, that's crazy. I know you're like you run five oh stores, you have God. a life, you do the live show, you do the podcast. How do you not read every comic? I don't. I. We might need to. We don't want you to get canceled. I know. Oof. The people are like, then why are we listening to this? <laughs> but um, so I am not as caught up on all. I read some DC books. Yeah. I, I keep up a lot with the, the Bat family stuff. Wonder Tom King's Wonder Woman I've been reading. I keep up with, but I'm not reading everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, even for me with like knowledge, broad knowledge of the DC universe right. currently. It's not exactly, like, very friendly, I felt, to new readers at all. As a more so new reader, I was overwhelmed. You were like, where's Batwoman? That's, like, that's the one <laughs> queer character I know from DC. Like, I, <laughs> where is she? I um, I mean, I, I do feel like I, I walked in and we started to talk about this book. And I said, I mean, I know Harley and Ivy. Uh, and then Ivy had a different girl. Yeah. And Ivy even has a new girlfriend in yeah. one of the one of these stories. So I mean, it's uh, definitely I feel like a little bit more difficult to be a person who is newer to these types of heroes to come in and just like know what's going on. It's so tricky too because this is the book that like we definitely sell like a lot of these like you know in the mall store, which is when I say it like this, that's more like we don't have subscriptions there. It's it's in a mall, busy mall, so it's a lot of like. New readers, people who aren't current on continuity, this would really appeal to them. People right. who maybe like identify this way, yes. who'd want to pick this up, and I think they would feel very lost. I mean, on the I one agree. hand, maybe that would get them into like researching these characters. True, very true. And part of it is like that. Just you know, there are some queer mainstream characters, like we said, Harley and Ivy mm-hmm. and, and Batwoman. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just by the nature of these characters, they are tend to be side characters. Yes. So it's harder, uh, you know, if you're only showcasing queer characters, then you're going to have a lot of these kind of side ancillary characters in these stories. I completely agree. I think that when you have a book like this that is so, you know, based in representation and you're kind of appealing to newer readers like you said in a mall store they see this they're like oh pride awesome i want to check this out you do kind of want to make sure in my opinion that you want to include characters that are easy to follow easy to recognize you can still include those side characters that are a little more obscure the fan favorites but but also like i it was like bringing up like relationship drama that you know happened outside of this book and i'm just like man this is this is you know, uh, I don't know. It's difficult. But but at the same time, and then this is also something I don't need in my life anymore. Just But I was trying to think back to, like, 13-year-old me. Right, right. Who might have thought 
been just super excited that this existed and I could see myself being like maybe this person has a cool costume and like mm -hmm. nerding out and going online and like figuring out who they are. Absolutely. But that would that's what a lot of these stories would require of me. I would need yes. to go Google them. Yes. So mm -hmm. so it is interesting. So like if you are well versed and well steeped in DC like the current DC continuity already, then then you will then I think you'll really like this. Yeah, it'll okay. be fun. Uh, or lots even if of you different different just like stories. some of these, like yeah. if you like if you really were a fan of like when John Kent was Superman, you know, there's a John Kent Superman story, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or you know, you want more of Aqualad because you know the the Aquaman book hasn't been coming out recently. Then yeah, then this is great for that. But um, yeah, it was just interesting, and also you know by nature they're all again very slice of life. They're all like stories that directly tie into their identity mm -hmm. which is like man it would have been cool to just see one that was just maybe an all queer team creative team oh, focusing yeah. on a queer character and they were just like doing just wrecking shit you know right like doing the actual i do i agree with you completely i feel like at least one of these short stories could have just been superheroes doing superhero stuff but i do think the highlight for this which is always i feel like the highlight in these pride specials like there was one that was really touching either last year or the year before that was from the voice act that was written by the voice actor of batman mm -hmm. the animated series kevin oh, yeah, conroy yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um and that was like so touching and it was about his like experience becoming batman and his identity and stuff uh we both really liked yes. the backstory in this which mm -hmm. is by phil jimenez uh, who, longtime writer and artist for DC Comics, did some incredible work on Wonder Woman. Uh, was Spaces. Spaces. And it was about his kind of connection mm -hmm. to Wonder Woman. Yep. And Paradise Island and Themyscira and that idea of, like, it being kind of, like, this place he wanted to go as a kid Absolutely. when he felt different. Yeah. And, like, the idea of, like, a queer utopia, you know? It yes. Was, it was very moving, I thought. It. Well, I agree. It was completely inspirational. And like I was telling you before, I really liked that it was the journey of an actual artist, writer in the comic industry who is sort of uh, expressing his feelings on identity coming into himself yeah. as, you know, accepting himself and, and the things that he liked through Wonder Woman. I yeah. thought that was great. And honestly, I feel like it's such a great capstone to the book because it really sells you on people like why does this book exist and i was like you know maybe it's not something i need now but when i was 13 i would have really dug i feel like that that story at the end really like drives home like how important these stories can be to people like that like how important even wonder woman not being like you know watching the show as a kid it wasn't like out there queer right but like for him it meant something it did and you know continues to mean something to him this day these characters now could mean that right to, to new younger audiences. True, very very true. So I liked that. I thought it was a really good like capstone to the book, um, even though there were things where I was like, maybe I would have had a couple more mainstream. Maybe I would have led with like the first story. I would have put someone like super recognized. You know, right? Like right. Um, yeah. Yeah. But still, like I said, if you are if you're into DC mm -hmm. continuity, pick it up, check it out. I'm going to drink some water real quick. All right. <laughs> uh, I think. We love it. Last, lastly, uh, for the books that we've read, Rook. Rook Exodus. Exodus. This, this is our last week look back. Rook Exodus number two came out last week. Uh, again, part of that Ghost Machine imprint. It is written by the famous jeff johns with art by jason fabok yes and so this is the second issue issue and number two i was so excited right you that was your favorite of the three last when we read all three right yes uh well i loved red coat when we did the oh, ghost machine right red uh, was great. but rook exodus was definitely like top tier as well um it was I in your top three was so excited <laughs> <laughs> sorry for dire wolf uh, the female character that they're introducing into the storyline. Yes, the female warden who controls wolves with yes. her helmet. Uh, I Even when we first read uh, the first issue, I saw her helmet. I was like, oh my gosh, that looks so dope. Uh, I hear 
that one of the creators I heard along the grapevine has mm -hmm. like 3D print files of the helmets of these characters. Oh snap! Please release them for cosplayers like me. I want to cosplay Dire Wolf. Uh, would you so do bad. Dire Wolf? I would kill to do Dire Wolf. That would be so freaking. Cool. I mean, Jeff, come sign at the store. Come sign at the store. You'll do a Dire Wolf for that. I would right? love to do Dire Wolf. I feel like as long as I can get that like 3D print awesome file of that helmet, I will. I, I mean, everything else is like tactical wear so tactical. like cool tactical uh no i would kill to do that that was so so fun um even when we were reading the first issue i was like taking pictures and like looking online and being like i gotta cosplay this character so yes um dire wolf is finally introduced her uh alpha pack like the alpha of the pack wolf is yeah. named freya which is the which name is of my cat so you need to cosplay I mean, this character. I felt like such a connection. I was super excited. Um, but we finally get to meet her. She is looking for Rook. Yes, Rook. Rook, obviously, so so we kind of intro this in the last one there. They went onto this planet because they ruined Earth. Yep. And, you know, these guys, wardens, they were kind of like early colonizers. They have these helmets that can, you know, they where they can tel telepathically control these animals, but they're on the fritz. Yep. And this new world is not all that it's cracked up to be. No, they also ruined the new world. Whoops. Because, like we said in our really great uh, little reels that we have on Instagram, like, go humans. Go humans. <laughs> so Rook is trying to get off. Him and his pal Swine are trying to, they've been trying to put together this rocket so they can get off this rock. Yes. Rook and Swine building the rocket, trying really hard to escape. Uh, and Ursa, Ursa? Ursa. Yeah. We get a new villain. Very, like, I get, like, very, a lot of, like, maybe it's just because I'm excited to hopefully see Furiosa this weekend. Like, very, like, Mad Max. Yep. Like, he felt very, like, a Mad Max villain. 100% was going to say the exact same thing. It was giving Mad Max vibes. He's got the helmet, and, like, he's this huge, like, muscular dude that's shirtless. And he can control bears. Giant bears. Not just I mean, bears are already giant, but these are huge bears. Like, listen. <laughs> you and haven't seen bears like this. You no matter what like website you've been on. Right. All right? These are some you've... Mm -hmm. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yes. Listen. Happy June. <laughs> Good. I was going to say, great connection to Pride Month we're having here. Uh, he's got an army of giant bears. Uh, he came after swine yep and now he's after rook and direwolf yes uh, and he wants their helmets he wants their helmets he wants to collect all of the animal helmets the warden helmets because he he wasn't originally trained he stole his or his stole his bear helmets his. so who is this person what are his motives why does he want to take all of these helmets and keep everybody on this planet yeah i mean just to like highlight just to, i mean you get so many so many incredible creators in this ghost machine team jason fabox art continues to just you just it's just such a treat to see him do interiors i mean if you like jason's stuff you know that already but watching him you know just get to draw these awesome splash pages of like rockets uh and things and explosions and giant bear mecha bears and like uh it's just such a master class I wish he could draw like every comic I read I because know. beautiful work. It, the art's incredible. And I mean, as you know, I already talked about this, but as a cosplayer, these character concepts are just so cool. Really, really fun to look at these characters in action, and also that they give these little like blurbs about them. Yes, so like neat. the character files, like yeah. like trading card kind of file cards. Like, so yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited to continue to see more of the wardens come out bringing out different abilities i what i really liked too because instantly i was like how do i break these helmets in the first episode we did mm -hmm. but i really liked us starting to see the kind of drawback and like yes. rook talking about like you get some of the abilities but when you have this telepathic link to these animals you get some of like the negative impact mm -hmm. of like you know like crows being um 
selfish yep and like only thinking about themselves and surviving yep yep and yep. when he has that helmet on he becomes more like that exactly and then he also is you know explaining that even when he took it off later on There's like he's after still effects. feeling that after effect of being so connected to these crows that he's having this like more animalistic thought process where he's like screw swine maybe i just like i just go away i worry about saving my own skin yeah. i thought that was cool and i'm interested to see more of that like how you know just how this 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 cool piece of tech like what stories can we come up with this with this so yeah agreed. i thought that was that was super fun uh so that was rook exodus number two again if you missed out i mean we still have copies of number one we're still doing that five for all three at ultimate comics you can try all three number ones for five bucks i mean they're just really worth picking up. I, I I really dug Rook Exodus number two. When I was joking that it was a light week, I was like, oh, we're gonna have to, you know, do a number a second issue because there's just not a lot. But you know what? It was it was cool to get to continue to talk about. Absolutely. Rook. I mean, I love moments like this when we get a second issue to read because, like we've been talking about, when life is so busy and you don't have time to like really sit down and read through series. Uh, having an excuse that's work related is yes. fabulous. Yes. I'm very excited to continue. So uh, great. Uh, super, super awesome book. Definitely check it out. Yeah. And then now it's on to Final Order Cutoff. Uh, you know, for as light a week as it was this week, next week's FOC is a huge one. Uh, one. For DC, we've got a new Zaytana book. This one seems like a lot of fun. Yes. I'm Z excited. Zaytana, Bring Down the House. This is written by Mariko Tamaki, who is one of my favorite, like, indie creators. I like a lot of their their stuff. They do a lot of just, like, standalone graphic novels. Um, Mariko is an incredible writer. Uh, and art by, and cartoonist she draws, too. Art by Javier Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. um, and Zaytana is a real, like, really fan well-loved fan favorite character who just doesn't get a ton of, of comics about her she doesn't she doesn't really get the spotlight a lot but yeah she is absolutely a fan favorite i love her i think she's such a cool uh character concept in yeah. the dc universe and this description um the preview description seemed like a lot of fun you know she's she's sort of sticking to the gimmicks to yeah, the she, cheap she's, illusions she's got a like vegas magic show where she's not using real magic she's yep. just doing like stage magic but then of course you know demons got a demon you get sucked back in so so she gets pulled out of she's trying to get out of the game she gets pulled back in yep uh and it's just going to be like a you know a fun five issue mini showcasing um zaytana and Javier Rodriguez, really fun art. Um, so I'm excited about that one. Then, this one, you were really excited. You were into the backstory on this one. I was, yes. Uh, uh, Spider-Man Reign 2, yeah. number one. This is the sequel to the hit uh, Spider-Man series, written and drawn by Kara Andrews, who did the first one. And I sought you over, like, a, a history of Spider-Man Reign. Yes. Uh, so, upon reading the, the small little preview paragraph, I see that there is this mysterious new black cat. I know. Which I'm like, whoa, who is it going to be? What is? What are they going to look like? Mm -hmm. What's the What's the story? So, as soon as I see that, I'm like, okay, I really got to, like, learn more about this Spider-Man Reign universe uh so sienna luckily sends me the wiki and i could look it up look up the backstory look mm -hmm. up the plot it's edgy it's old peter parker who killed mary jane oh. through cancer mm -hmm. from his radioactive semen only in comic books could you get this type of innovative storytelling <laughs> thank god Thank God. Um, <laughs> that is that is the joke. Like this panel of that <laughs> being described to people is is a lot of what when <clears throat> immediately when I think Spider Man Rain, as good of a story as it is. Right, right, right. That is immediately I'm like the radioactive sperm one. <laughs> That's, and that's exactly what Sienna did when they came in and asked and, me if I read it. Yeah, I was like, Brittany, did you like, what did you think of the story? And she's like saying what she did, you know, it's like really cool and yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, and really like, and then I'm like, did you read the whole wiki? Huh? Did you, did you find out how Mary Jane dies? <laughs> <was> so stupid. <laughs> um, but what I'm interested in is like the original Spider-Man reign is such like a a post 9-11 book because mm. it's very much a commentary about like you know 
New New York City is like under this like kind of like lockdown. Mm-hmm. There's no more superheroes and there's no more supervillains and there's this like kind of at least elite anti crime force kind of like it's you know very DKR very like you know fascist police force kind mm-hmm. of like Avengers Twilight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. And, you know, definitely a commentary on kind of maybe the Patriot Act after Mm. 9-11 and, like, New York after 9-11. And so it's interesting to see a sequel come out now, Mm -hmm. you know, 20 years removed from that feeling. I'm just interested to see what they're going to do with it. Yeah, yeah. It definitely has an interesting take. Uh, I agree. I, I really like the following the journey of an older sort of washed up, Peter Mm -hmm. Parker, you know, and how he's going to tackle being a hero in a place that doesn't want superheroes. Yeah. So, and who's the new black (laughs) cat? That's what Brittany's all about. That's what I'm all about. (laughs) Me, I'm like, has he figured out his issue? Can he ever love again? (laughs) I'm hoping that is in the sequel. You just need some more... Maybe Mr. Fantastic has, like, come mm-hmm. up with some sort of spermicide. Like, I don't know. Oof. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Protection of some kind. Yes. For the next victim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway. I liked Spider-Man Rain, though. I'm excited for the sequel. I love Carrie Andrews art, too. Mm-hmm. Carrie Andrews art is incredible. Um, he's been doing so many covers recently. Again, just really excited to see Karen Andrews do interior art. Yeah. Um... Then we have Wolverine Deep Cut, number one. And this is a deep cut because this is written by Chris Claremont, uh-huh. art by Edgar Salazar, and this is telling an untold story based on, like, when Chris Claremont was writing X-Men back in the 80s, oh. like, in the, uh, uh, I think in the 240s issue mm-hmm. era of X-Men, like, Wolverine mentions that he, like, goes on this trip to Australia. And, like, we don't see the trip. Going to the Outback. This is the Outback trip. Yeah. So we get to see Wolverine throw some shrimp on the claws. <laughs> get some, uh, bring it back around. Kangaroos. Kangaroos. Will he fight a kangaroo? Maybe. Uh, does he discover if koalas are mean? You can learn about that, obviously. Sabretooth is involved. Obviously. I don't know. It's a Wolverine story. It's written by Chris Claremont, who wrote the original, you know, Wolverine. Uh, Sounds like solo, a fun you know? adventure. It's fun. It's will, fun. Will he go on a walkabout? Mm. We'll see. Faustus? <laughs> will someone say, Arnar? <laughs> uh, find out. Uh, and then, that one fan from Australia is just like, I am never I watching you guys, you guys again. I hate you guys. You know what I was going to bring up? And then I was like, no one's going to remember this. Australia had a, a, a string of PSA advertisements called Stoner Sloth, oh. where it was like showing people who got high, but they were like, they, they turned into like a sloth. Oh, okay. And like the, the par- like, you know, it's like a family eating dinner. And then, his, you know, his mom's like, could you pass the salt? And he's like, <laughs> and he's like a sloth. <laughs> <laughs> and the sister's like stone a sloth <laughs> like and there's a whole series of these so they wow. are on youtube i have definitely go check out the stoner sloth i will psas it would be you know and i'm not gonna i'm gonna say that they it is possible that this is like a I think they're real PSAs, but it's possible that some comedy troupe made these okay. as, you know, as fake PSAs, and I took them as real because right, I'm right, not right. from Australia. So if you are from Australia, let us know if you've seen these, if they are real. So, I would love to know if they're real. We'll, they are real. We're getting nods from your producer. Oh, That's why we have a live producer. That's why we have a live So we can producer. make sure we're 100% factual on here. <laughs> They are fun. Oh, man. <laughs> don't, don't watch it while we're, we're still recording. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Last but not least, the big one, X-Men number one. We are relaunching X-Men. Relaunch. Relaunching. This is your time to jump on the X-Men bandwagon. Yes. Uh, it is written by Jen McKay with art by Ryan Stegman. Jen McKay writing Blood Hunt, 
Aha. Writing Moon Knight, mm-hmm. writing Avengers. Basically, he's the unofficial head writer at Marvel. Yeah. Uh, and he used to be a junior high school teacher. Which is so cool. Follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. Never give up. It is not too late. It is not too late. If you teach kids annoying children, <laughs> I assume they're in junior high. I was annoying in junior high. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can write the X-Men. Ryan Stegman, uh, again, someone we haven't seen do interior art for like a long running, like an ongoing book for Marvel in a while. After his, like, he did that long Venom run with Donny Cates and then kind of stepped away to do his own thing. Mm -hmm. Really excited to see him back and especially doing the Mm -hmm. X-Men. Of course, I'm a fan. Cyclops, the rightful leader of the team, is helming this team. It's got some really fun characters on this team. Magic on the team. Rihanna. uh, Psylocke. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a good mix of, like, newer characters and older characters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're... Krakoa, the Krakoan age is over. They're off their little island. And, of course, they have to deal with the fact that humans don't like mutants. Again. Again. It kind of reminds me a little bit like it's going back to the Bendis take where, like, Cyclops is kind of like a takes-no-shit leader Mm. of the X-Men where he's like, listen, mutants, we're looking out for us, Mm -hmm. and we're going to be cool, and I'm kind of radical, kind of revolutionary. Radical? Hop on this bandwagon. Like, it's like... Radical or radical? Che shirt. Che shirt radical. Okay. Okay. So, I'm excited uh, about that. So, that is on FOC. So, if you have been... If you've been digging any of Jen McKay's stuff, like if you've been liking Blood Hunt mm-hmm. and, and, and Moon Knight and maybe his Avenger stuff, and you want to give it a try, or you've just been kind of waiting for a relaunch for X-Men because they've been doing the Krakoa stuff for a few years now. Right. This is your time. And then to round it out, they're doing a Phoenix series, too, uh, by Stephanie Phillips and Alessandro Miracolo. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're a Scott fan, you had X-Men. If you're a Gene fan, you've got the Phoenix. If you're a fan of both, Buy read both. both. Buy both. Will they kiss? I it, don't know. It's two different books, so it's we don't know. It's two different books. <laughs> um, so hopefully next week we won't be sick anymore. Yes. God, I hope so, right? Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Uh, Yeah. It's going to be a really interesting live show. (laughs) Two. Two live shows this Remember when we we moved? Week. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. It's it's breaking down now. And one of them's a Star Wars show. Woo. So so join us for the live sale. These are not the sickies you're looking for. We're going to be here tomorrow night, three hours at night. Yep. Uh, you should have seen last Tuesday I did it by myself and I was becoming sick on the show. Oh my God. Everyone kept saying, it's okay, Sienna, you can end it. And I'm like, I know I'm going to be too sick to come in tomorrow. I'm just going to finish it. Yeah, and yeah, I'm like just... dying on air. Oh, no. It was like, you can look through the comments and they're like begging me like, Sienna, just turn just it off. Start... Just stop. It's painful oh, to watch. God. I felt so bad. <laughs> I, I didn't have, I woke up without a voice last week and I send uh, Sienna a text confirming. I was like, I can't, like, I can't talk for three hours. I can't even talk right now. And I was like, I got it. And I was good up until like a half hour before. I was like, eh, it's just going to be really bad. Yeah, right before the show starts, I get a text from Sienna. And they're like, I am not feeling well either. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> so anyway, we're a little better. A little better. We've got uh, the cough drops. Yeah. We'll, we'll hopefully give you guys... A good show where we can speak coherently and not cough every two seconds. Sell you comics for three hours Tuesday night, and then Thursday night, Star Wars special. Yes. Maybe I'll wear my my robe. Wear it. Maybe. Wear it. Uh, it's I, a bathroom. I'm sure we'll have the return of the uh, Queen Amidala shirt for me. So. Hype. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>